Essence Cross Nintendo. We are back once again with my man Stealth. It's been a while, Stealth. It's it's been a little bit. It I'm, definitely has. The, the, there's been a little bit of a lull in the Nintendo news lately, but not this week. Yeah, not this week. I I, I missed you, buddy. Seriously, like you're, you're the yeah. homie. So it's it's good to see. It's good to talk with you, um, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you're someone new, you're just joining in. And remember, if you want to directly support the Player Essence Cross Nintendo podcast, check out the Patreon link in the description. Things are going to get crazy with, uh, obviously, Mario Bros. Wonders, with Mario RPG, some of the other big games coming out. And uh, we're going to have some cool stuff for you guys uh, when it comes to, like, Switch 2. Obviously, Switch 2 is coming, so the podcast is going to be a lot of fun going forward. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump into, I guess we should just, should we just jump into our Super Mario Bros. Wonder impressions and talk because there's a lot to talk about with the game so we might as well jump into it i mean th this podcast is literally the only thing that could pull me away from that game right I, now. i was thinking maybe stealth doesn't want to come on the podcast today because he's going to be playing wonder you know but i was like uh he'll be probably, but you said you wanted to talk about it last week you said yeah. you wanted to talk about it so i was like all right i think he still wants to come on the podcast today um so let's talk about it so super Mario Bros. wonder is out let's go over some of the reviews first um, reviews, <laughs> I don't know if you saw what happened, <laughs> there was a mistake, people were alerting me, there was a, there was a code red, a code red, <laughs> Jimquisition Sonic Superstars review lowers the Metacritic score for, uh, for, for, uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, but it's been fixed, everybody calm down, don't worry, their review will come and it will drop it later, don't worry, um, but it's 93 average, obviously, Metacritic must buy big, you know, big game, another big 90 plus game rated game this year. And Nintendo's fourth 90 plus rated game this year, third if you don't count the DLC uh, of uh, Future Redeemed. So, Stealth, uh, in terms of just the reviews, before we get into your impressions and all that, what did you think about the reviews? Because I know you do review write-ups on Twitter that are get a lot of views. That's that, that's, a, that's a little bit of a moneymaker there for you. So, so yeah, what what you, you think about that, man? What do you think about those reviews? Yeah, so, um, I, you know, people, it's funny because people actually, like, give me a heads up about when the review embargo is up because they want to see me do that review tweet. Mm -hmm. um, so, I love it. I, 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 I wait for yours. I, stop, I, I just stopped doing mine. I'm like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna hit the like button and, and look at stealth. Yeah, and, you know, so I knew it was coming. Um, and in that tweet, I basically predicted it would come in between an 87 and a 94, I think I said. Um the previews were too good. Like, I, I would have been shocked if it was below a high high 80s. Mm -hmm. um, so, it coming in at 93 was pretty much exactly where I thought it would be. Um, you know, I thought there would actually be a few more, like, sevens that there were. Like, you know, complaining that, you know, 2D platformers aren't whatever. Um, but thankfully, we, did, we didn't get many of those. We got um, one so far. Yeah. So, honestly, like, the reviews themselves didn't didn't surprise me and it kind of and, and i felt like any new 2d mario game coming after the new series as much as i love the new series uh, you know it got safe and you know some people would say stale um it got a so, little stale know, so just moving away from that would give it a point or two um yeah. anyway you know no matter what it did um so yeah 93 not you know like, like I, th I think we both agree like we both don't really care who wins at the game awards it's really more about being nominated and getting the attention for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you've said that too. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think Super Mario Brothers Wonder is going to get nominated for Game of the Year. Um, either action or action adventure, but whichever one holds the platformers. Yeah. Um, you know, and then Family Game, obviously. It's going to win Family Game. Family Game is a lock. <laughs> and then maybe, and maybe even art style too. I think it deserves art style too. I mean, it could. It it, it definitely could be at least yeah. be nominated for sure. The, the animations and the art style, and just like the graphics, just in general. That was one thing that I read throughout. Like they were very impressed. It, it you know, it has a simplistic look to it, but graphically, it's more well, like way more advanced than like New Super Mario Bros. Like ever was, you know. Yeah, I mean, the colors just pop, you know, the enemies are well animated, you know, it's just the, the wonder effects, things go crazy, so yeah. it looks really good, so, um, you know, I think it's gonna have a big showing at the Game Awards, too, and, and you know, but, yeah, I, I think the reviews are right where, you know, it makes sense to me, because, you know, as much as people rag on the new Super Mario Brothers games, most of them all scored in the high 80s. 
No, not um, high. No, not new. Not new Super Mario Bros. U. New Deluxe. Super Mario Brothers U, I think was 85 or 86. Really? Um, the the original on DS was 89. The Wii I, game, I think, was 87. Yes, I know those are high, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I, I think you scored pretty good, too. I think you scored in the lower 80s. Oh, 84. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 80. I mean, the, the New Super Mario Bros. series, the, the worst yeah. one is New Super Mario Bros. 2. Yeah. That's a 78. So that's a 78. The next would be New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. That's an 80. New Super Mario Bros. U is an 84. If you want to count Luigi, they, there was some Luigi, New Super Luigi U. That was a 77. So that, technically, I guess that would be the lowest because it is its own game. Um, but, I mean, like, in terms of just, like, individual oh, yeah. release. And then, and then Mario Maker was 88. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. New Super Mario Bros. Yeah. 2, that's the lowest one. But, yeah, you're right in terms of the, the New Super Mario Bros., the original on the DS, yeah. 2006. New Super Mario Bros. Wii 2009, 87. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, New Super Mario Bros. U, like U, 84. That's still not a bad score. Yeah. It's actually. That's... Yeah, I mean, none of them were like low 70s, 60s, or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and we got a few new reviews today, actually. I think Game Informer gave it a 9.25. Nice. Um, which is which is great from them. So, so yeah, overall, um, you know, it raises the bar for what people are going to expect from the next 2D Mario. Yeah. Because it used to be, you know, 2D Mario was safe, and then, you know, if you want, like, the crazy stuff, you got to wait for the 3D Mario. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not going to be the case anymore. Yeah. This this definitely goes back to, like, the reviews. Everyone's saying this is, like, the best since the 1990s. That is, like, something that I've heard over and yeah. over, which I, I knew myself. But the thing that I noticed, especially, like, from the demos to this, is that at least from the demo that I played at, at uh, Nintendo Live, it looks better than it looked, you know, which Nintendo does that, but the demo that they had, that was definitely an older version, because we were playing, or the TV was trash. It was either the TV was trash, or it was an older version of the game, which it could be both, I mean, or it could be one or the other, because it definitely looks sharper and smoother and better. I think the reviews also um, mirrored that as well, in terms of what they said, so, um, so yeah, man, um, it, it's awesome. It's awesome stuff. Uh, this weird guy. You seen this guy on Twitter, bro? Stuff. No. You have the chat open? I do. It's that weird dude that's everywhere with the, with the Zelda the Zelda icon, the Zelda profile picture. You, you don't know who that is? Let me see. It's that weird dude, bro. Anyway, uh, we're just going to talk about it. He's, he's super weird. This is a weird PlayStation dude. Uh, he's always on everywhere saying that, like, Nintendo's done. They're destroyed. They're this. Like, he, he's definitely a, he's a weird guy. Anyway, we just talk about Um. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Reviews really good. Obviously, um, you know, the reviews. Spider-Man came out this week. I don't know. Did you get a chance to um, to pick up? Are you picking up Spider-Man? Are you, are you going to get that at any, t at any point? I have Spider-Man too. Okay. But it's, you know, 2D Mario is my priority right now. And then I also still have Sonic Superstars. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I'm also re replaying Dragon Quest Seven on the 3DS, so mm. I'm, 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 I'm stuffed. Yeah, you're, you're, you're stacked up, man. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're definitely stacked up. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting, though, because, you know, when the reviews came out, I think there was a lot of people that were actually kind of shocked. They didn't, I mean, there, there weren't people that were, I mean, there were people that were obviously predicting, I know MVG, I think he predicted the highest score out of all of us. I said, did I, I think I said 90 plus, right? I think I said 90, I think I said 90. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, I said 90. So I was thinking, you know, we might, yeah, that, those 2D people, those seven out of tens, you know, those gym, gym quisitions, stuff like that, you know, some weird like digital eclipse or PC gamer version two or something like that, you know, like I, I thought that was going to happen like a number of times, which would get into about a 90, but I mean, no, like you said, it, it's been, it's been pretty crazy. And, um, you know, obviously I don't contribute to those review scores or anything like that, but that all helps, man. Like I'm telling you, like having that Metacritic must play, having that high score, that's just something. And the developers love that. Like, I know it, we shouldn't put everything on reviews and please do not take reviews as the be all end all. You should never do that. Right. But man, you don't think those developers were happy with that really high Metacritic after new Super Mario Bros. Like, after all the new Smart Bros, like there hasn't been anything that's been in the nineties. There's there's been nothing. 
Nothing's been a Metacritic must buy 2D Mario. Even with Mario Maker, right? Even Mario Makers aren't. No, plus, the yeah. highest Mario Maker was Mario Maker 2 to 88. Yeah. Yeah. So in the past, since this, since what, the Super Nintendo? We haven't had yeah, a Mario, yeah. theoretically, that'd be like a 90 plus. Yeah, I don't even think Metacritic goes that far back. It doesn't. Um, but I, I'm, I'm guessing those would rate 90 plus. If it would, it would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, it's true. I mean, the developers do read what people say. Like in that, you know, ask the developer that Nintendo did for um, Mario Wonder, you know, Tessica said like he'd read about how journalists would say that Mario Maker 2 killed any reason for a new 2D Mario and he knew that'd be wrong. Um, Th that's that's so. the dumbest thing that I've ever heard, though. Why would a freaking Maker game kill a... What? A lot of people said that. That's and... so... That's the dumbest thing ever. New Super Mario Bros, you destroyed Mario Maker 2 in sales. Why? <laughs> what? Yeah, but, like, he read, he read all that stuff. Um, and so he he'll, he's definitely going to read these reviews and, like, yeah. what people are saying about it. I didn't see that, but now yeah. that you said it, or, yeah, that's something people would say probably that's something probably people would say but i never i i think maybe i felt that way before mario maker came out I'm like well maybe we don't need mario we don't need, anybody can and then what like i was like anybody can make mario levels and it, people can just keep on creating and don't get me wrong there's some dope stuff but it's not a new 2d mario it's just using the same things that we've gotten so you it already feels like oh i've played this it already kind of feels that way it just uses the previous art styles like and people just and like the way that you even play that game there's too much fan dangling is that a word i think <laughs> i think you might have just made up a new word i maybe there's too much smorgasbord that, i didn't even use that quick but there's too many different things that you've got to do to play the game like oh let me put in this code oh let me do this oh there's no reward there's no reward it's just it's just you play it's like you played a level Great! What? <laughs> that's not a. That's not Mario. There's supposed to be some type of. You have your lives. You have your this. You have your your collectibles. Like Mario Bros. Wonder is like the. Is it not so awesome how they did like the collectibles and how they do stuff in that game? You know, like that's part of what makes a 2D Mario game great. Like you have your all your items and like your 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 item collection box. You have like that's what it was about. You have all your coins and everything carries over. Like it's not about playing random levels over and over that is not what 2d mario like single player mario is about so i don't know why anybody would say that um so anyway it was weird those are the reviews guys good reviews back up to a 93 we'll see what happens later <laughs> let's get into our own impressions though uh stealth how many hours in are you have you been playing um i'd say i'm about five hours in Oof. um not Did you go home from work much. early? What, how, wait, what happened? Yeah, uh, you know, it, 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 I was playing in between. You were playing at work. You were. Play <laughs> how did you get this man? Got five hours in. He was at work. Wait, hold up. What happened here, Snow? <laughs> He's like, but boss, yeah, please I don't, don't watch me. Don't watch this podcast. I hope your boss does not watch the podcast. Your boss doesn't watch the podcast. No, no. Of course not. Um, no, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I've played, I haven't beaten the first world yet. I haven't beaten the first world yet, but, um, I'm a bunch of levels in, I would say. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, um, yeah, that's fine. But, yeah, I'm, I'm still early in, I'll say that much. Yeah, absolutely. So, in terms of, like, what is your impressions with the game in terms of, like, what it does great compared to the previous ones? What are your comparisons? Because there's some, I mean, we had somebody in here saying, oh, well, it feels very similar to the old, looks very similar to the old games. How do you compare? What do you think is the closest comparison? Or how do you feel is, like, you know, about the game in terms of, like, you're just, just, you're, I, I'm, I'm betting you're collecting everything and all that, right? And you're trying to just do, like, 100%. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going for a 100% run. Um, you know, the first thing is, you know, how smooth the controls are. Um, Elephant Mario was fun to use. And, you know, I do like how every, you know, every major stage has a bunch of collectibles. You know, you have the three big purple coins. Um, you know, you have the Wonder Seed that you get when you finish, like, the Wonder Flower event. And then um, also, which is, I think, the most stressful thing, it's always the most stressful for me is the, the the golden flag is is getting the golden flag at the end of the stage because if you don't get it you have to do the whole stage over again yeah yep, yep. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I mean, all the stages are great. I like how they've kind of incorporated challenges a bit as well. Not not just the badge challenges, but there's also some like light puzzle challenges too. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also like races. Yeah. Um, so they, they've kind of incorporated some of the new Super Mario Brothers U challenge aspect to it. So it's not just pure platforming all the time. Yeah. Um, which, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's not terribly difficult because obviously where I am, the highest star has been two. Yeah. Um, so like I haven't even, uh, it's gonna be a while before I even see a three star, a four star, and definitely a five star course. I've played a four star course. Yeah. And it's not that far into the game. It's just kind of like a separate area ish that you can go to. And I've played that and it's I, I that's the first time that I died was in yeah. that I died three times in that four star course because of how the course is. Not gonna spoil it. Um so it definitely ramps up as you go along. I see some people saying you're disappointed by the challenge. Trust me, you guys are at the beginning. The beginning is it's easy, it's just getting you acclimated but there's a couple other levels there's some i played some three stars um i played um i played a one four star and it was definitely a challenge i did see andy robinson who's uh the owner of vgc i don't know if you saw his tweet but he said that he was on level one level for four hours couldn't beat the level then i think he said that he put it down then came back and then he was able to beat yeah. it but yeah so he was stuck on one level for four hours so there's definitely going to be uh far more um challenge uh challenge in the game you know so yeah, so, yeah. it's always a balance because nintendo wants people to beat it and like kids to beat it mm -hmm. and to sell a lot so like it, it can't be like super mario brothers wonder kaizo where like just to get through <laughs> you have to do like shell jumps and and all these tight window things like nintendo is never going to do that um for like you know the main the story. stand Maybe yeah the stand game. yeah post game stuff yeah. they will that's the post game yeah. stuff they will but yeah they're not gonna sit there and make it super crazy hard the whole the whole time through yeah. you know i mean that's like that, that, that that's that's to me what makes like donkey kong country like differentiated is like tropical freeze is hard yeah at least it was for me the, um it, it, it ramps up the difficulty but yeah it gets harder and harder as you it gets harder quicker than yeah. um than super mario bros usually does yeah but you know overall and i tweeted this it's like you know you feel like the same like wow i feel like a kid again you know yeah. when i was playing mario 3 and mario world like i feel the same way like i can't believe like it's this good yeah which i mean if you go back and you look at the mario games i mean mario games aren't really hard overall like none of them are actually like hard like i, I never really had any problem with I, I beat mario games like when i was younger you know um, so like Super Mario World, it's it's not hard. Mario Bros. Three, it's not really that hard. The original Mario Bros. That game's not hard either. Mario Bros. Two, well, lost levels, whatever you want to call it. Okay, that game's difficult. That game's a bit more difficult, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Mario Bros. Two USA, that's not hard either. I, I've never had any issue with any Mario game to be honest. Like 100% in it, yes, that's usually hard. Like if you want to get everything, that's usually difficult in most of the mario games like the newer mario games um if you want to get yeah. everything but like usually I mean, if, you just, if you want to just beat the game those are never really that hard yeah i mean there are always levels like here and there that are just painful yeah um but it's usually not like sustained yeah 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 which is fine like i don't i don't mind as long as the game has it's like creative and as long as it has some challenge baked into there and it's you know and it's it, it provides it can't be just a complete cakewalk for the whole thing and like the post game stuff needs to be difficult as well as long as they have that that i'm fine just because there's gonna be a lot of different type of people playing the game um it doesn't have to be like dkc which that game is just way harder the whole the whole time um in terms of things so it doesn't necessarily have to be like that um to me it just needs to be like creative inventive fun varied in its level design and all of that and then throw in some of those baked in like challenges that are worth it once you you get there so so yeah that's just my it's my opinion but everybody's opinion is different um, so yeah, in terms of like my own personal, um, impressions and thoughts, like, yeah, I, when it comes to like a comparison, it's interesting because I love what they've done, like with the over, like the overworld, like how you can move around. I don't know why that's such a big thing for me, but it is like, 
I don't, I don't know why I like that quite a bit, like finding secrets and doing stuff like that. But like the challenges that you talked about are really cool. I think that really just, it just mixes things up. It's quick, you know, get in, get out type of gameplay. And it flows really well. The little speed things that you get too, like that you jump on and like they're, they're fast and stuff. That's cool too. The power-ups, the new power-ups that are in the game, like you said, like the elephant stuff, uh, carrying the water in your trunk, using it to like the flower certain stuff. The wonder seed stuff is wild. Like it's, um, um, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, man, I, I'm really enjoying it quite a bit. I'm really enjoying yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, early impressions are definitely like, it, it's strong. Like, you know, it, 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 it's not like, you know, um, where, you know, you play a bunch of levels and then, you know, like the, the first interesting thing is usually like the boss fight or like a boss fight, like just seeing all the wonder effects and wondering what it's going to be in every level is interesting to me. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's a very strong, like early first impression for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the thing that I, I'm interested in seeing, like going forward, is what they do, like 2D Mario, right? Like 2D Mario now is it's kind of like back, right? It's yeah. kind of like to the point to where it's back to where they've set such a high bar for it. So are they going to take Wonder and just evolve that, or are they going to make something completely different? What do you think they're going to do next for the next 2D Mario game? I mean, I could see them doing like a Super Mario Brothers Wonder too. Mm -hmm. um, or I could see them doing something completely different. I mean, or I could just see them doing Mario Maker 3. Um, Don't do first. that. <laughs> no. Um, no more Mario Maker, please. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, like, it's really hard to predict what they're going to do, but, yeah. like, whatever they do, like, the expectations are a lot higher now. Yeah. The expectations are like sky high, but that's good. It's good to have that because if you like, I'm pretty sure you read through some of the interviews or you saw that they are talking about how, you know, um, they, they weren't really given a, um, a, like a, like a time, like a, a time cap, right? Or like they were, hey, you can spend more, like they spent way more money on animations. Like, I think that was probably like the big, like to spend more money on those animations and like the art style and everything. That was the, one of the big things, obviously the wonder effects and all that, putting ideas in there from the young staff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just great for them to really, um, you know, let them not have to be like a slave yeah. to like new Super Mario Bros. Like let them do different things, so. Yeah, and that and that senior staff that they had was stacked with talent. Um, I don't know if you read any of like the Ask the Developer interviews, but you I know did. they kind of went through with the with the senior developers. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's like you know obviously Tezuka has been working on Mario for forty years. Um, you know, there's just a, a lot, of, and even they, they even had like the the director of Mario Galaxy Two and Three D World and Three D Land. And Odyssey, yeah. who was on that team too, yeah. and you know it was just it was just a stacked team. Yeah, super stacked team. They they really it feels like the excitement feel, and I know this has been said, but it really does feel like a 3D Mario game. Like when it comes to some of the like some like the 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 exploration, like when you're simply looking at every single little thing. New Super Mario Bros. I, I lot of I just just run through things. Everything was static, right? It was just kind of static. You know, the 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 enemies are, bah, bah, you know, it's like it's it was very static. But this is very different. It's very unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, um, so it's interesting. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about this real quick. The the Nin brought up a good thing. The super stack C team. So what what was all this about Christopher Dring and his uh, his C team comments? He felt that it wasn't going to do as well. Um, the reports are right the early indication is is that this game is doing incredible okay uh, based off of the amazon right now the eShop, it's number one across the board i think there's only like two like most of the major countries it's number one it's it's doing really good so uh so yeah i don't know where the c team comment came from <laughs> Not sure where that C team, maybe he just heard some bad information, but clearly not the C I mean, if this is their C team, the next 2D Mario game is going to be like a, a, a 15 out of 10. If this is their C team, I was like, oh my God, who's the, who's the A team? They've got, <laughs> my God, crazy. Who, who's, who's behind there? It's Prime Miyamoto back there? Like, okay. Uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, but let's go and let's move on a little bit to... Uh, the next topic here, there's actually quite a number of things I wanted to go over. Um, I know you didn't get a chance to play Sonic Superstars, but you did get a chance to check out 
the uh, reviews. So, a little bit of controversy, a little bit of Mario versus Sonic bumping heads here. What are your thoughts on the Sonic Superstars uh, reviews? Because you bought the game. You thought it was worth the 60 bucks right there at launch. And obviously, so did I, I guess. So, <laughs> what do you think so far about it? I mean, you know, and I think the average is a 75 right now, which is, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's, it's 75 in a vacuum is perfectly good. Um, you know, I think, and, and you mentioned this in one of your videos, it's just really unfortunate that it's launched three days before like a game of the year caliber 2d platformer um because now everyone's talking about mario and i'm not seeing a ton of chatter about sonic at all no um, i'm not so so you know i i did actually check the us eShop right 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 before we hopped on and you know obviously super mario brothers wonder is number one but um you know sonic superstars is number six that's good. So, it, so at least it's you know, and then I think the digital deluxe edition is like number like thirty. It's mm -hmm. in like the so it's on the chart twice. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's doing okay. Um, but you know, obviously, you know, you always you know, it, it's going to be compared to Sonic Mania, which I think had like an eighty-five Metacritic and yeah, you know, so it, it's 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 not as good as that, you know. But I've heard it's fun. Um, but yeah, I, I think. <clears throat> You know, with the developer they had, you know, it's just not, it's just never going to be an upper echelon game when you hand it off to a studio like, like, like they did. Like the Battle um, and Wonderworld studio? Is that, yeah. are you saying that the Battle and Wonderworld people can't make a 90 plus rated game? Is that what you're telling me? Well, they haven't shown it yet. I mean, they really haven't. <laughs> so, but yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, a 75 is fine. It, it'll, it'll be fun, but. Yeah, it's just unfortunate it launched before Wonder. Yeah, you know, I kind of look at it that that's Sega. I mean, they said it was a coincidence. They obviously didn't know. But, I mean, I think even if, like, why would you launch it in October? That seems like a summer game to me. That seems like a summer game. You just get that baby out there maybe July or so, August. I think if it's launching next to Pikmin, I don't think that's that bad, you know? I think it looks a lot better launching next to Pikmin. Even though Pikmin has a way better review score, 10 points plus higher, completely different type of game. You know, and I know Spy I mentioned Spider-Man, but like number 1 in terms of sales is going to be Nintendo Switch. It's still selling it's going to sell great on there. I think it's going to sell a million copies plus on Switch, right? And when it's all said and done. Um but the next best system for sales would probably be PlayStation. And Spider-Man 2 is just kind of like dominating everybody's PS5s. But there's still a PS4 version, so there's still that. But I don't know. I just don't think it was the right time to launch it in this, you know. Like, I think they should have brought the game forward, you know. I think they should I mean, have I mean, forward. maybe they couldn't bring the game forward. Maybe, maybe. they should have pushed it back. Um, oh, you run a big risk if you push it back, but yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean... Even November, I know. I know November is pretty busy too. Um, yeah, November's but November's busy, but it's not as bad. No, and you're and you're avoiding a 2D Mario. Yeah. Um, which which is the whole point. But yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I want to see more 2D Sonic. I do. Yeah. Um, I, I like 2D Sonic better than 3D Sonic in general. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, 2D so, Sonic's yeah. been it's been better, objectively. It has. It it's actually been, has been. Yeah, it's been better. It's been um, better. But yeah, I mean, it's. You know, it's you know, I've heard it's a fun game, but nothing extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's what I've got from my playthrough. I put a few hours in, and uh, it's good. It's good. It's just at at one point I was just kind of like, okay, you know, I'm enjoying playing it, but it's not that long, you know. Um, so I, I'm still trying to 100 percent it though, so I'm not anywhere near done. Um, but no, it's 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 not a bad game. It's just, but after playing, <laughs> I'll be honest, after playing Wonder. <laughs> it's like, is that I, I I backlogged this game already after playing Wonder, so like I'll, I'll get back to it though because it's not a it's not a hard game to beat or it's not some of the boss battles are kind of like eh, but it's not a uh, super difficult game to beat. So yeah, I mean hopefully I think Sega will be fine though. I think ultimately they'll be fine, but I just think that was a strategical error. But seventy five, like you said, is not a bad score overall. Like it's really not, you know. Um, so, so yeah, there you go. Um, all right. So let's go to move on to the next topic here. Oh my God, I got like a little gnat in my face or something. Anyway, uh, 
Let's move on to the next topic here. Nintendo, big Nintendo Switch 2 details from Nate the Hate. I don't know if you got a chance to watch the podcast at all, uh, Stealth, or did you get a chance to see what, what was said in there? I did, yeah. I actually enjoyed their podcast. Yeah, the podcast is really good. It's uh, really good. You, you've, got, um, you've got MVG's voice canceling out Nate's monotone, boring voice. So it's good to have that dynamic between the two. Um, and yes, in that podcast... Um, don't listen to some, uh, I saw Review Tech, shout out to my man Review Tech, but he's out there saying that, oh, they said it's going to be more powerful than the Xbox Series S, they didn't say that, um, <laughs> so here's what happened, guys, here's what happened for those who don't know, who, who didn't watch the podcast, so obviously we know about the DLSS 3.5, Nate was trying to track down some more information on what they're going to be doing with the features of it, it's like the feature set of, of it, so he was trying to track down um, like frame generation, which is just techniques within, you know, what they're doing, right? With the, with NVIDIA's doing with their graphics technology, like ray tracing, like the whole reports of why the ray tracing in the Unreal Engine 5 demo looked better or perceived to look better than what PS5 and Xbox Series did a number of years ago. So he, he tracked that down. And essentially from what he got from his source was that it's going to have uh, something called, what was it, a frame... Yeah, frame regeneration, not yeah, frame sorry, frame regeneration or something like that. I don't know some some type of thing when it comes to the um, or ray tracing, you know, whatever. So it's going to give you better ray tracing. Sorry, not frame generation, better ray tracing. Um, let me make sure that I ex get exactly what he says. Um, and with that, so here we go. So it's gonna uh, ray reconstruction. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I, I read, I listened to the podcast, but I'm getting mixed up. Um, so yes, ray reconstruction, but might not support frame generation, right? But the ray reconstruction is gonna get you better quality in terms of the looking game. It's gonna get you with the DLSS. It's gonna get you uh, better frame rate and the appearance of looking better even though it might be running at a lower resolution. So um, it looks, based off of what they're saying here, it looks like it's going to be a really competent system. Another thing that I thought was the best thing that they talked about here was that it's a custom SOC. So it's not a off-the-shelf part, and Nate was very adamant about this, that it's a it's not like a Tegra X2 or just like some type of chip that they've already put out. I could put in like a car or something like that. It is a custom SOC. It's a uh, uh, you know, a chip built specifically for the Nintendo Switch 2, not like, oh, here's the NVIDIA Shield, and then we're, we're going to take the Tegra X1 and put it into the Switch. So you're going to be able to do things that you wouldn't have been able to do before, and you're going to be able to, um, you're not going to be able to just take that chip and, and compare it to something on the market and say, okay, look, yeah, here's the teraflops, here's the power. So they were very bullish, very, um, you know, uh, very intent on saying that. However, they were also very, um, they were very clear on saying that, yes, it's not going to be stronger than PS5 and Xbox Series, so don't expect that. But what it's going to be able to do is basically punch above its weight. It's going to be able to look better because of uh, at times or with certain things that are built specifically for it because of the newer architecture, because of what they're doing there. So, um, uh, so yeah, so it's interesting. So, Stealth, I want to get your thoughts on this. What do you think about the rumors? Once again, it's a rumor. You got to take it that way. But Nate obviously is a friend of the show. He's a personal friend of mine. I'm, I, he's, I've known him for, oh, my God, we're going on seven years, six, seven years plus. Um, so uh, he's not the type of person to lie about things. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? Sorry, sorry I was so long winded. Um, so what are your thoughts on all this stuff? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it sounds great. You know, I'm not really, uh, you know, driven by, by tech when it comes to the systems. Like what, what matters to me are the games coming to it. Um, but you know, it, it's it is good to know that you know it's it's it seems like it's going to be a more capable system than, than Switch was comparatively, um, which which is always good. You know, I'm just I'm just ready for this thing to get announced and, and see what these launched lineup games are and, and what's actually coming to it. Um, but but yeah, it's exciting. So you know, I'm hoping we're we're, we're closer to a release or a cl we're closer to a reveal. Yes, the reveal, like, and that's something that you know they've talked about before. The reveal is probably going to be. I mean, not even. It's going to be next year. It's not going to be this year, so we don't got to worry about that. Mario Bros. Wonder, Tears of the Kingdom, you know, Pikmin, WarioWare, Super Mario RPG. They've still got a bunch of games for this year, so they don't got to worry about this year. They just got to worry about next next year, 
You know what I'm saying? They just got to worry about next year or uh, something like that. They don't got to worry about it this year. So I think that with the with this system, I think that Nintendo's kind of this is going to be in some ways like I can see this being even a bit more successful than what the Switch was. And the reason why I say that I can see this being a bit more is because everyone now knows the concept. Everyone now sees what's going on. And I think that Nintendo for their first time ever combining the home console and portable, you combine that with a more competent system, I think that's going to explode things even further. I mean, they, they know the path that they have to take. They know what they need to do. And I see their company far more conservative now at this point than they were before. So I see this as being nothing but positives for it, for, you know, for Nintendo. And I see them as actually having, like, you know, their first party games everything's running like super mario bros wonder right like super mario bros wonder rock solid and I, I i can see that being a thing where everything's more stable now some of the third party stuff who knows but i can see nintendo in terms of that like you're not going to have some of the the issues like high the hyrule warriors stuff right the age of calamity stuff like that those type of things so this is what the dlss and this is what those support more so than anything you know um so yeah that that's the that's the exciting thing um, because I think that it's all built towards the games. And like Stelt said, the games are like the most important thing. Like, you can have a powerful system, you can have the most powerful system, and if you don't have the games to support it, what does it even matter, you know? So, so yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially the Switch 2 details. Uh, check out the Nate the Hate podcast, guys. They did a big, uh, you know, podcast talking about it. I mean, it was, it was fun to listen to, so, uh, so yeah. So, uh, you have any uh, predictions on uh, the uh, the launch? What you think they're gonna do, uh, like launch lineup or stuff like that? Stuff? I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, I think most of us think like the three D Mario is gonna be the big game. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think Atlas is gonna announce you know Persona Three Reload and Refantasio. And there was actually another rumor today that I saw, but I didn't look too deeply into it. But but like Necro, who you know got a lot of details right from like the last Nintendo Direct and when it was going to be and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I think you mentioned him too. I've um, mentioned he, him, yeah, a couple times. He did say that, you know, he thinks that, you know, like Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to come to the Switch. Yeah, uh, too. I, don't, I don't know about um, that. <laughs> but, you know, so this is, I mean, really, like, depending on how capable it is, it might just be able to get a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I think, I think, I think Street Fighter 6 actually could be a launch game. Yeah. Um, for Switch 2. I think I think I think that's a pretty kind of safe bet, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to think of the developers, like Square Enix. Um, I, I don't know if Square Enix is going to be there at launch, but like during the showcase, I could see them revealing like Bravely Default Three. Um, you know, I, I could I could I could see a lot of a lot of Japanese developers just going hard on the Switch too. Yeah, that's something that I've spoke about before, Stealth, and the more that I dig, the more smoke there is. Now, nothing from Tokyo Game Show, but the thing that I heard, and I talked about it in my video, is that a lot of them were, I want to say embarrassed, but they're like, they were like, hey, look, this is not going to happen, you know, with this next thing that we're doing. Like, Nintendo, specific, Nintendo themselves, like, they did not like they did not like the situation that was playing down with like some of their games right like with the uh like xenoblade chronicles definitive edition like some of the issues with that or like the resolution like the constant resolution the constant digital foundry stuff like that stuff kind of like really set nintendo's management off in some certain type of ways like okay we we can't let that happen again you know so i think that they want to avoid that at all costs like not, it doesn't have to be 4k 100 a million frames per second you just got to have it you know where it just looks decent and it runs decent decent enough like you can't have the pokemon situation like that can't yeah. be like a normal thing and that's the thing that they want to clean up the most which is why we're seeing this but that's probably going to be echoed in the price you know like I, I i don't see this system being very cheap what are what are your thoughts on that yeah i mean i could see the system being 399 yeah. um at launch and you know that's fine i mean that's fine with me you know as long you know if, if it launches with a new 3d mario and it looks incredible you know, I'll pay a thousand. You know, I'll pay a thousand dollars for that. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll simp for the, for the 3D Mario, but um, 
yeah, at the, at the end of the day, it just comes down to the games. And, you know, I think Switch has set it up nicely where, like, the old kind of cliche of, like, third-party games don't sell on Switch, it's, it's not true. Because uh, a lot of them did sell very, very well. Yep. Um, so, you know, I think we they can just keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the third-party thing's interesting because I remember there was a lot of... Oh, man, remember, like, the early days of the Switch? Like, the uh, people, the port begging, the uh, we have to get... Like, that was just so... I was never a huge fan. Now, obviously, people can ask for whatever they want, but I was always like, listen, Switch is breaking sales records. Y'all need internal departments for this. Like, y'all need, a, a, like, you know, your your risk management, right? Or your, 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 your people that know the market and say, okay, like, listen, the system's selling this. Other games have sold this. If we produce this, this is how, like, we don't, you don't need a bunch of people on here saying, we want it, we want it, we want it. Like, I don't know about all that. And I think towards the end of the Switch's life, people didn't port back. It was just, the games would just come, right? Like, we wouldn't see campaigns and change.org yeah. and stuff, like the weirdo stuff that we saw at the, uh, the, be the beginning of the first number of years of the Switch. So I think that with the Switch 2, that stuff is just not going to be, like, because it's going to be a lot of PS4 and Xbox One games that are already dead. Like, what is it? Scarlet Nexus is $5 on, <laughs> on PS5 right now. It's like, they can definitely make a Switch 2 version and sell it for 40 bucks or 50 or maybe even 60 and it'd probably do a little bit. People would probably buy it. People, would, oh, well, I can play it on my Switch now, you know. So, 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 yeah, man, it's all good though. Um, I do want to take a comment though because I find this interesting. It says uh, players, players says, even now, uh, RTU still insists that Switch sold well mostly because of third parties. I didn't see that. Maybe he said that on the podcast, but I find that interesting. I, I, I don't think he knows the sales numbers though, because I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he names a bunch of games that sold. I mean, third-party games definitely help Switch. Don't get me wrong. Like, I want to get Stealth's opinion on this, too. Third-party games help the Switch. But, I mean, without the big first-party games, Switch does not sell. It, it, it's it's not a, it's not a big seller without the big first-party. But that's just my opinion. Maybe you think differently? No, not really. I mean, because if, if we look at that first year, I mean, we had, like, the Wombo combo of, like, Zelda and then Mario Kart. And that like propelled it. And then we had like Splatoon 2 in the summer. And then we had Mario Odyssey and Xenoblade 2 at the end of the year. Yeah. So Nintendo was the one who like shot the system up. And then like it was the second year everyone else got on board. Like I'm trying to think of like the big six the big third party successes that first year. And like, you know, obviously NIS America said that the Sky of Five complete did really well. Yeah. But that was like you know, 100,000 units really well. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the kind of success to, like, propel a system. Um, I, I forget when Minecraft was brought to Switch, if it was that first year. But that was big, too. Yeah, my, no, Minecraft um, was ab absolutely... That was absolutely yeah. big. That was absolutely big. I mean, I guess that's a... Is, I guess that's, like, a yeah, third-party yeah, game. <laughs> there wasn't, like, a third-party exclusive that I can think of that was like, oh, I gotta run out and buy a Switch for this. Yeah, I mean... It, I think that they're, he's talking about like the, just like the third party games like Doom and Wolfenstein and like yeah I just while those games are great oh. I I don't think those are the games that people yeah. people rushed out to go buy a Switch for you know well I mean I think the biggest success that first year was it the first I think it was 2017 was Mario plus Rabbits yeah that was the that yeah that was that that was it you know the, that, I mean that, that was the biggest third party game and that did sell millions but like I don't know if that was a system seller it was just like a really and it was still Mario. I mean, it was still Mar I mean, it's still Mario. You know, wow. so I mean, like, it's a first-party character in the game. But yeah, I mean, I, really, the the biggest third-party success that's not like Minecraft um, or something that I can think of on the Switch. I mean, there's some Dragon Ball Z games that did like two million. Excuse me. Um, there's like uh, The Witcher. The Witcher did, I think, almost two million. Um, but I, Monster Hunter Rise, you know, that was huge. But that's probably like the in terms of like the core games, like that's, that's probably like the biggest core game in terms of sales. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, Octopath sold like three million on Switch. Yeah, Octopath. Um, maybe Stardew Valley because that's like always yeah. in the top five. Yeah, Stardew Valley. I mean, the indie games did great too. So like, you got to give it yeah. to the indie games. But I mean, like all that stuff's available on other systems for the most part. Like all that stuff's yeah. available on other systems. Like Nintendo needed the the big first party games. They needed like Smash Brothers. Like remember that that 2018 holiday? Like for talking, Smash Brothers just like cleaned 
house like between Smash and then the following year there was like Astral Chain and there was like there was Link's Awakening and there was Fire Emblem and there was just Luigi's all these Mansion other three. Oh yeah, Luigi's Mansion three. There was like yeah. all these games and then after that it was Animal Crossing and Animal Crossing was like massive. The Animal Crossing it just sold systems like crazy. So the biggest spikes that we saw in sales numbers were always around Nintendo first party games. Never really around third party. So I don't I don't understand that that claim. Like I don't I don't I, I think once again it's just more of more of not knowing the sales numbers more so than actually breaking down the numbers. Um so uh so yeah. Um, all right, so let's let's go ahead and move on to the uh, the next thing here. We're gonna end the podcast here um, with the game of the year discussions now because we've got Super Mario Bros. Wonder, we've got Spider Man, we've got two ninety plus rated games. Stealth, I have to ask you this big question. Yeah. Does um, does Starfield get kicked out? Look, I mean, if you're going only by reviews, yes, it has to. Um, I think it has like an 84 Metacritic, and maybe it's down to 83 now. Yeah. Um, it, it just wouldn't make it. Um, but what we saw last year, you know, Stray made it. Um, it wasn't one of the best reviewed games of the year. There it were wasn't. at least five games that would be better than it, mm -hmm. but it still made it because I guess it was an indie game mm -hmm. or it was popular with the with with the you know with, with with the crew. So I guess if Starfield is popular enough with those reviewers and many of them are very western focused. Mm -hmm. Um I think it could, but like if you're going just based off reviews, which they don't, then you know it, it wouldn't make it. But I I do think there's going to be some very heated conversation of like Starfield makes it, but then like, you know, Street Fighter 6 or, you know, Final Fantasy 16 doesn't. That it's... that reviewed much better. There's going to be a snub somewhere, right? It so be there's going to be a snub somewhere. So I, I, I put down, like I did a halfway mark list, and I think I'm looking at my game of the year list in terms of what I think is going to be nominated. You know, Street Fighter, you know, maybe Resident Evil, that's another one. Obviously, you have Tears of the Kingdom, you have Baldur's Gate. That's already four right there. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, let's just lock that one in as well. That's five. There's one more spot. Spider-Man too, right? Like that would so, that, so. that would have, so no no real indie game this year. They always have like an indie game, you know. So like no real indie game in yeah. there this year because of how stacked the year is, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I do think that Super Mario Brothers Wonder, um, Zelda, and Baldur's Gate are locks. So like already half the bracket is locked in. Um. You know, I think Spider-Man Two is going to be very popular with the uh, with, with the voting staff. Yeah. You know, ninety plus. Um, I think that's number four. Um, I think Resident Evil makes it. I do because it, it it had a review average of like ninety three, very 90, popular. Ninety three, yeah. Yeah, so I think that makes it. So yeah, it's a, it's just one shot. And do you put Sea of Stars in there? Um, you know, Ooh, they if, they, I mean, I thought that they would, but yeah. Wonder and Spider-Man come out and now that it has yeah. these scores. So it's, it's, it's going to be difficult because, oh, go ahead. You know, no, but then it's like, what, what happens to, um, you know, Hi-Fi Rush, I think it's Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush, know, Final Fantasy awesome. 16. What happens? Yeah, yeah. What happens to that game? That's, yeah. This is wild. This is like, we haven't had a year this stack like this could technically be a no. year where there's all 90 90 like 91 plus rated games right there's not yeah, a single game underneath the 91 and then you know what i don't know that super mario rpg remake isn't going to be high 80s too yeah i don't think that game's going to make it i mean i think it, it, that game no. could be like a 95 and it wouldn't make it you yeah. know but but it, stuff is going to get stopped that's just the way it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah. This year has been the craziest year, um, the craziest year when it comes down to it. But I, I think that it's going to be an interesting year uh, for it. And yeah, Final uh, Final Fantasy sixteen fans are like legitimately the craziest people, like yeah. that I've I've ever came. Up, I, and listen, I've been in lots of fan bases and I've seen a lots of things, but these are a rare breed of fans. <laughs> like I've never. <laughs> These are like the rarest breed of like the nicest sissies, the most whiniest 
nicest at times but also biggest sissies of a fan base that i've ever seen where they flip out on any single thing it's not like hey you know i feel that this game is better for this or that it's like how dare you compare it to another final fantasy game like i've never heard of that before most fan bases will have no problem comparing one game in the franchise to another not these fans <laughs> They will flip out on you for comparing two Final Fantasy games coming out within a year of each it's other. It's true. I mean, like, over the last three years, like, I guarantee you I've bought more Square Enix games than most people. And they still come at me. Yeah. You know, like, I support Square Enix more than a, a, a lot of even their, like, ambassadors do. Um, in, in terms of just buying everything that they put out. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're definitely very passionate, I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> absolutely super, super, super passionate people. Um, really, um, gosh, it's just, and so they're going to be upset because the funniest thing that I saw with this, and like I said, I did a stream, I think it was yesterday, um, cause <laughs> I had a little bit of fun with someone that was like that, uh, that, that called me out, you know, I don't want to drag you into it stealth, but, uh, just to give you a little background with this, some of this guys, like, and why I think that the final fantasy fans are going to go crazy. I had a little bit of a back and forth with the guy. Like I got like, you know, when I made my tweet about, I think final fantasy, you know, 16, it, you know, it's fine, but seven rebirth is going to be the way that they're going to go forward. I had a million final fantasy fans quote, tweet me, ratio the hell out of me and say, how dare you compare these two? And then when I say, no, I didn't, I didn't mean it in any type of way. They told me I'm a liar or I don't believe you. So I was like, all right. So I kind of just kept tabs. I'm like, I'm just going to wait to when you guys compare something. And then when you do it, I'm going to be like, oh, so now you want to compare stuff. Oh, so now you're going to compare things. It's okay to compare games that you feel one way. And that's what I did. And like I said, Final Fantasy fans were like, it's not the same thing. I'm like, oh, no, it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh, I, no, I, it's exactly I, the same thing. It took yeah, a while, and though. And I tweeted something very similar to you did, but I didn't get nearly the blowback. I, 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 I don't know why. Maybe just because they felt like it. I mean, I think maybe because I tweeted it first. When did you tweet yours? I mean, I've been saying it since, like... <laughs> I, I've been saying it forever where, you know, it's like I didn't really care for the Final Fantasy sixteen combat system. Um, I've, I've been saying that repeatedly. But you have to, like, temper it with something positive. Because if, if you only, like say it in a certain way yeah they'll, they'll go after you i said um, i said i mean it with no ill intent they said I'm a, I, I lie so it was interesting but i like i said i i think that once again these fans are probably gonna go nuts when their game isn't nominated yeah. um because they had an issue with me comparing it to ff7 I mean, rebirth the thing is, like it's, it's probably not gonna win rpg of the year either because of baldur's gate yeah yeah baldur's i mean even though, like, and then maybe this is controversial, like, I think Octopath Traveler 2 is better than Final Fantasy 16. I do. I don't... Um, here's the thing. I don't think that's controversial. Let me tell you, and I'm glad that you brought this up. This is a great conversation. I need you to bring up stuff like this more. I don't think that's controversial. You know why I don't think that's controversial? Because Final Fantasy 16 got the score that it got because of the graphics, because of the music, because of, of that. Those are the type of things that it got the score for. At its core, in terms of what it does as an RPG... Octopath Traveler 2 smokes Final Fantasy 16. It's not even close. Octopath Travel 2, Octopath Traveler 2 is a better RPG through in and throughout. It doesn't have the graphics. It doesn't have the, uh, the some of the compositions. It doesn't have the voice acting. It doesn't have all the other things that make Final Fantasy like a big AAA, right? But in terms of just a game, let's just say Octopath Traveler 2 had the graphics of a AAA and all that, but the same mechanics and graphics of that, people would be, it'd be a 90 plus rated game. You know, maybe that's some of the charm of Octopath Traveler 2, that it looks that way. But let's just say it was triple a right? That game is incredible when it comes to its mechanics yeah. and it's it's what it does. That, it's better. It's As an RPG, it's better. Now, if you want to talk about an action game or whatever else, that's fine. But I don't think that's super controversial. And I think that their scores are close enough to where you could make that claim. Like, I, I don't think it, like it's one's an 80. It's not that you have to base it off of Metacritic score, but it's not like we're comparing like a freaking 50 to a... 90 something yeah. you know but yeah i mean so like rpg is going to be interesting um but yeah i mean there's gonna be a lot of games that get snubbed and like don't get any awards like xenoblade chronicles 3 did last year yeah there's just gonna be games that don't get any awards that maybe should or but it just the way it's gonna break this year like you know um 
family game is going to be all Nintendo games this year again. What's the family uh, game roster? It's going to be Pikmin. It's going to be uh, Mario. Mario. It's maybe going WarioWare. To, WarioWare, maybe, maybe WarioWare. I, I mean, ooh, what didn't? But yeah, cause some of the games they released earlier weren't. Maybe Kirby. I don't know. They don't nominate. Kirby. Yeah, maybe not because it's a port. Yeah, but, it's a, yeah. Um, but Mario definitely has that one locked up. But mm. yeah, I mean, people, people, people were like being a little nasty. Not nasty, but you know, when 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 when, when I thought that you know Mario would be nominated for best action game because people think like that has to be like. You know the 3D, you know kind of bombast the kind of thing, but like platformers can do it too. Um, but yeah, when when the, when like the the sixth game of the year now games are announced, yeah, there's there's gonna be some hard feelings. There's gonna be a lot of hard feelings. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would yeah, get. It. I, mean, I I do think this is the year when Nintendo gets two games. I do. I I, I just don't think there's any way Zelda and Mario don't make it. Did they get? Two games in 2019 or no? No, they got two games in 2017, right? Did they get Mario Odyssey and Zelda? That year? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think they got Mario Odyssey and Zelda that year. But I, I think maybe in 20, was it 2019? I think they got Smash Brothers. No, they only got one game. They just got Smash. Yeah. So it's been a while. It's been a hot minute. Um, yeah, 2017, Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. Yeah. So yeah, it's like Star Rail more than all right. So we're gonna go ahead and get into questions, guys. If you have questions, um, let me know on on the Discord. Um, I will answer the questions. Then we'll wrap it up here. Um, so we're gonna start off with Monado Mario on Discord, and he says, uh, "Do you think Switch Two needs to have mature rated AAA games alongside, um, along aside with the first party games uh, launch titles according to RTU?" um man this man's picking on rtu today does it need to have that uh no no what nintendo systems need to have is they need to have a big nintendo game at launch they don't need to have he's thinking about it because he likes third he doesn't like first party so you have to remember guys there are people that they will give you their opinion based on their view not ba and just their opinions not based on like numbers and facts and sales they'll just do it based off of just what they what they like so that's where he's coming from so all these opinions that you're saying from rtu he's just it's just coming from his own personal opinion not that it actually means that that's what they need to do or what's successful so nintendo for any nintendo first like any nintendo system you need a big first party game launching with third parties or trying to be microsoft and sony is a bad idea like worrying about mature rated games that doesn't nobody cares you know they have xbox and playstation for that so that's just my take on it um, yeah i mean it, it, it's definitely a misnomer that you know you need like 50 launch games all in different you just need one like incredible game that's it like Switch's launch lineup was not good at all. No, there wasn't. Uh, but it had Tears of the Kingdom. Or Breath of the Wild. And then the next yeah. month it had uh, not Tears of the Kingdom, but Breath yeah. of the Wild. And then the next month it had Mario Kart. And then, you know, the next month it had another game. Arms. You know, yeah. you get a build up. Um, you don't need everything at once. Yeah, so. and the the Wii U had that. The Wii U had yeah. Call of Duty, it had Batman, it had it had all these like it had Ninja Gaiden, it had all these mature rated AAA games, and how did that do? You know what I'm saying? So th this this notion that it needs AAA third party along with just all, none of those games are gonna sell. Like if you just throw a dump truck a bunch of random third party mature rated games alongside a big 3D Mario or something like that, everyone's just gonna buy Mario and be like, well, I already play these i'm not gonna buy 70 dollar or 60 dollar triple a mature rated games for what i already have them. they're like five bucks or they're like 10 bucks on on xbox and playstation so no that that's that's ridiculous um next up is from george ft says um considering the quality and quantity of games nintendo has released this year still have super mario rpg coming next month would you guys say that 2023 eclipse 2017 in terms of best year for switch Ooh. Um, I don't know. I don't think this is the best year. I'll, I'll still take 2017 with Zelda, 3D Mario, Xenoblade, um, Splatoon, mm. Arms. You know, just Mario every plus... heavy hitter that Nintendo had, they they, they let go. Mario plus Rabbids, um, yeah. Mario yeah. plus Rabbids. I mean, that's third party, but still. Yeah, yeah and, and then the Mario Kart Deluxe, and then, you know, Pokemon Tournament, 
Deluxe, I think, was the first year, too. Um, but this is a very good year. Probably the best, like, six-plus year I've ever seen. Um, but, yeah, it's very good. And Nintendo has, like, a lineup, like, through, like, March of next year. Um, but they, they have a game just about every month. Um, they do actually have a game every month until April. So, like, yeah. it's a good time. Yeah, that, that I mean, 20... This year, I will say it's either very close or it eclipses it because you've got Zelda. You have don't got 3D Mario, but you've got a damn good 2D Mario game, right? You've got that. You've got Pikmin, which is awesome. You've got Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed, which that might be my... I think that's my favorite Xenoblade game. It's just short because it's DLC, but it's such a... It's like the most refined combat that they've had. So you have that as well. You have Fire Emblem Engage, which to me, I like a lot. I really like that game quite a bit. Not everybody's as high on it, but I still really like that game. Um, and then on top of that, like you still have Super Mario RPG. Like you still have some big hitters coming. Like you still have some good stuff. So I don't know, man. To me, it's definitely close. Um, but yeah, 2017 might edge it out. But it, man, it it is absolutely close plus we got like advanced wars one plus two we got Bandit origins like we still got a we got a bunch of other stuff this year so uh it, it was a ooh, it was a good year this year it was a good year um so uh next question is from monado and he says uh to stealth have you played honkai star rail what are your thoughts on the game do you agree with oj that the gotcha in the game is annoying and it's better if the game is fully priced i played honkai star rail too by the way so have you played honkai star rail I've never played that game. <laughs> I, I, I barely looked into it. Like, it's like from from the same studio that made Genshin Impact. Is that right? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I've barely looked at. In fact, the the only thing I think I've seen it was on like Roger's basis stream. Um, I think he might have played it. Yeah, maybe. he did. Yeah, he had like a sponsorship yeah. with them or something. Yeah. So I think that was like the only time I watched it. I, I don't play free to play games. I don't. Like, just, look, I'm old school. Yeah. I buy my physical games. You know, I, I play platformers. I play RPGs like that. I th and I don't dump money into stuff. Yeah. Um, I spend enough money on like the games themselves. Where yeah. it's like I'm not playing free to play stuff and then, you know, spending a ton of money. So that's just not me. So yeah, I've played Honkai Star. Honkai Star Rail, honestly, legit. You would love the game if it was a normal RPG stealth. You would be all over the mecha the mechanics of this game are really good. It's a dope turn-based RPG. It's got great style. It's got cool characters. But the it, the baked-in gotcha, it, it's it oozes it. Like you can't avoid it. You've got trial characters. You've got just this a bunch of characters, like pulls, right? Like you have like you gotta you can pull them. Like you gotta earn resources. Like it's baked into the mechanics. Like. Octopath Traveler is a dope RPG because you do not have... I got to collect all these resources to get these different things, to kind of convert them to do this different thing, to get energy so I can do this, so I can get more characters. It's like, no, you run into them story-wise. You run into them normally. A, a free-to-play RPG, you can't just say, oh, well, you can play it like a normal RPG. No, you can't. It's baked into the design. Like, I have people, I, I have people tell me on Twitter, no, you can play it like a normal... Like, no, you can't. It's baked into the design of the game. There's all these different stupid resources that you have to collect to get new characters, or you just pay money to get it. Like that's not something that you can just change. So for me, it's it's a great game. Honkai Star Rail is really good. I like it way more than Genshin Impact, but I, I find it hard for me to get motivated to play it a lot when I'm just like, oh, I gotta get this. Oh, that character looks cool. It's a resource this, it's a pull that, it's just, it's just, it's just I'm good. You know, uh, I'm good, I'm good. Um, but yeah, next up is from J2 Blue Tunes, and he says, thoughts on Doug Bowser in the new interview implying backwards compatibility. Well, Stealth, what do you think, man? I saw your tweet on this. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, Stealth? I mean, you know, obviously he's not going to say anything. You know, that question was very baiting because <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, you know, this, you know, obviously, you know, Switch 2 was shown at, at Gamescom, like just pretending like it's a matter of fact thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then Doug's like, no, nah, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> he tried, he tried um, to get him. That interview—that was a good question. He tried to get him, you know. <laughs> yeah, he—they de definitely tried to get him. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, he he gave like the PC answer. You know, he gave like he, you know, he, he talked about how you know like the the Nintendo Switch account can theoretically make it very easy for people to transfer games. So that's mm -hmm. what he was talking about. The, the more interesting thing is they 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 also asked him about. 
the the leaked email about Phil Spencer wanting to buy Nintendo. Yeah. And he also just kind of brushed that off and was like, oh, we have a great relationship with Microsoft. We hope it continues. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, there's just no way, there's no chance in hell that he's actually going to talk about it or if that, it made the company uncomfortable or anything like that. If, if he talked about that, that'd be like an instant Furukawa morning meeting. Like, yeah, that that's a, they take that stuff really seriously at Nintendo. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to do stuff like that. It's, yeah, uh, so, so that, that, that interview did, like, Ask the questions that you know fans wanted to hear, but Nintendo, but Doug Bowser wasn't going to answer any of it. So, but you you felt that there was backwards compatibility kind of like seeped out of that I, interview, I, right? Yeah, I mean, without saying, like, I'm not worried about backwards compatibility. It's going to yeah, happen. Ne- neither, neither Nintendo am I. Fans are just crazy. They they, they, they want to make controversy out of something before it happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what what he said was true. It's like, you know, the games that will be compatible hey with guys, the next what system, would an maybe you still own them. Maybe you'll still own them again. Um, yeah. and, you know, obviously, the the, the 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 physical version of the system with the cart drive, you'll probably be able to put in your Switch carts. I I I just can't imagine it that you won't be able to. I I, I would say this, and uh, thank you, Juice Man Vaughn. I appreciate the $5. I'll get to your question right now, but I'll say this, and shout out to DSJ. Thank you for the subscription. Nintendo wants people to still buy Switch games. I don't know why they would, they want people to, I mean, why would you have the next Switch come out and be like, oh, no, you, you, you can't play it on there. You don't, I mean, it's not like they're trying to move on from that style, right? Like, it's still NVIDIA. It's still a hybrid apparently it's still gonna have a cartridge slot at least based off of what was said there you people are still gonna buy like mario wonder people are still gonna buy mario wonder next year with the next switch and people are still gonna want to buy that game it's like same thing with like ps4 to ps5 or xbox one to xbox series like people are still gonna want to buy the whatever games right and you instantly when you buy the system you have games to buy so nintendo wants that why would you want to have less games for people to buy you want to have more games and offer more for people to buy in terms of what they can instantly get or bring over so yeah to me i i get like what mvg said i get what people have said in terms of like the technical aspect of it but i think that you're working with the same company nvidia you're not drastically changing in my opinion the 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 structure it's not like you're going to x86 um you know you're still going to go with you know mobile chip um so to me they'll find a way to get that done um and yeah like the nintendo accounts thing i think that yeah it's it's uh it's definitely going to bring over the backwards compatibility with your digital library because they've been hinting at it for a while so um so yeah it's all it's all good um i i don't think that it's going to be too much of a problem um next up is juice man Vaughn with the five dollars thank you so much juice he says, and he says hey guys what would an ideal switch to rollout look like for me it would be as seamless to the system gets showcased but the lineup of games would keep rolling like how it is now but of course they'd be switch to showcase games sprinkled in thoughts um yeah i mean that's I, to me it should be a modified version of what they did with the switch you know like trailer presentation launch games every month and a half to two months big game at launch wait a little bit next month get something else out maybe you can do updates for games next switch to updates third party stuff sprinkled in scarlet nexus and stuff like that sprinkled in then the big games throughout the year to really push the system yeah i mean that's to me it should really just modify or if you want to add in a few different things or wrinkles but really shouldn't be too different from what the switch was in my opinion what about you still yeah, I mean, I don't think all of a sudden Nintendo's going to be like, you know what, for this new system, we're not going to do Nintendo Directs anymore. You know, that's old. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of the same kind of marketing. You know, there's going to be Directs, multiple Directs a year, Indie Directs. Although we haven't had many Indie Directs this year. Um, I think we had one, maybe. I think we had two. Um, we had two. Did, 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 did we have two? Maybe yeah, we did. Yeah, we had two, yeah. Okay, so actually, maybe you actually do for one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of the same kind of stuff. Like there's, there's going to be like a teaser trailer and then there's going to be a showcase. Um, right. and the showcase is going to be the big one with the reveals of first and some third party games. Um, and then, yeah, then the system's going to launch. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be much different. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the way to get it done. I, I think once again, you know, Nintendo's management is definitely less, 
they're more conservative than they than they've ever been. They know that the the stakes here, the the price, the cost of things. Um, there's going to be something zany, right? There's always something quirky with Nintendo, but I think one thing that they're going to not do is make it like the main attraction. Like uh, after the whole Wii U thing, I think that <laughs> Nintendo obviously. If they have anything like that, it's like a Labo situation, right? It's like a, oh, it's just this thing. It does okay, fine. If it doesn't do okay, who, who cares? <laughs> it's not It's not the actual system. Like Labo VR or something like that, you know? So, um, all right. I think that's going to wrap it up for all of the... Um, for all of the questions, if I'm not correct... Let me just double... I'm going to double-check Discord real quick here, guys. Sorry about that. I'm not prepared because for some reason my Discord went away. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for everything here. Discord completely... Okay, we got one more from... We got one more from DeAndre. Uh, predictions on Switch 2 release window. Um, I'll say it launches in November. Ooh, November. I am going to say they're going to be oddballs with it. And I think they're going to do September. I think it's going to be like a weird September-ish launch. Just get your games out. like Because like they still have games coming out in summer for the Switch. So I'm thinking just get all that stuff out. They're going to announce it early in the year. They're going to have their presentation like mid-ish, mid-early maybe or so April. Or May, May, June, July, August, September. Or not May. No, probably like May, June. Maybe like summer they might have their big presentation. And then, bam. And yeah, September. I will say, though, this is one prediction. Not a lot of people talk about it. I, I do think that, you know, obviously the 3D Mario is going to be the big launch game. Um, I think Splatoon 3 Deluxe is going to come shortly after. So, like, a Splatoon 3 that has all the DLC on the, on the cart... Or whatever they're, they've been working on, you know, looks better, runs better, online is better. Um, so I think Splatoon three could get a deluxe. Um, that'd that'd can, be that'd be cool because the DLC yeah, looks it, lit. Yeah, it's too soon for Splatoon four. Yeah, it's but too soon. Splatoon three deluxe, I think, is likely. Yeah, I think it's too soon. I think Nintendo's gonna use deluxe versions or use just updates as well, like where you yeah. can you can buy it if you want to just get the update you can get the update but if you want it all on the cart you can buy like a car a switch to cart you know yeah um, and, and i have talked about this before I, I do think elden ring is going to come to switch to the, the elden ring i know like roger's base is on the elden ring train too right yeah. like i know some he, of you got... he, he convinced me when <laughs> oh, okay talking. he's the one who convinced yeah. you okay cool yeah. cool cool <laughs> all right so elden ring Elden Ring could definitely be uh, be on there, but um, all right, we'll have to wait and see. But all right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one here. I am actually I owe you guys a little bit more of a stream, so Stealth, I want to say thank you so much for coming onto the stream. Where can every I, I need to add that your tag to the freaking your I don't know why your tag's not added. I will add your tag to your your uh, your video screen. Uh, but where can everyone find you at? Um, everyone can find me on Twitter at Stealth40K. Yeah, make sure you check his Twitter page out. It's really good, and it helps him out. So make sure you guys check out his Twitter page. And also, uh, once again, if you do like the Players is Cross Nintendo podcast, we are going to have some more stuff happening now that you know things are picking up quite a bit. You can always support us on um, on Patreon. That's link in the description. I just linked Stealth's Twitter account, so make sure you guys go uh, go give him a follow. So Stealth, thank you so much for joining me today, man. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It's always uh, fun to talk Nintendo with you. All right. I'll see you next week, Stealth. I'll, I'll, I'll DM you. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you in a bit. <laughs> yep. See ya. See ya.